Hello, everybody. My name is Kitty, and we are here with Tina Hotchkiss, um, who's going to be doing a demo for you today about how to draw complicated objects. And this is kind of a precursor to her new course that's coming up with us, which is five sessions starting on January 18th. And it's all about drawing objects and still lifes. So um, from here, if you have any questions during the during the, during, excuse me, during the demo, please put them in the chat in all capital letters so that I can see them better. And if those questions are relevant to what Tina is doing at the moment, I will ask at that time. If not, I'm gonna hold off those questions until the end when we do our question and answer session. And also stick around to the end because we are doing a giveaway today. And let's see, anything else that I need to tell you? Yes, if you look at the um, description, you will find links to the reference photo of what Tina is drawing today. I'm also gonna drop that link into the chat just to make things easier. So uh, from here, I'm gonna hand it over to Tina who will tell, tell us more about what we're gonna do today. Hi everyone. Um, thank you, Etcher, for having me. Um, I'm doing this live demo for you today. Um, we're drawing actually a coffee maker. Um, so, uh, the reason why I chose, uh, the coffee maker is because it has some complex, uh, parts to it, two parts that are coming, uh, together. And the method that I'm going to be using is drawing a box in perspective and then carving out, um, the object out of that and I thought that this would be a good object to do that that with so I think we can get started is that okay absolutely okay let me switch my camera here so that you can see what we're gonna be doing okay so I know that the photo here is a little bit dark um, uh, but you, you have your reference photo that you can refer to. And I wanted to show you some of the, uh, some of the things that I'm going to be using. Um, I'm uh, using a, a skew um, that you use for, uh, for cooking to kind of look at some angles. And I have a kneaded eraser. And I have this small... Um, uh, uh, Tombone uh, eraser and it it has a, a plastic uh, eraser and a white eraser and then I'm going to be using a mechanical pencil and um, it's a point uh, five and but you can use just a regular pencil and the pencil lead that's in here it's just an HB um, pencil lead a number two pencil would be absolutely fine. Um, I do have other pencils uh, uh, that hardnesses of pencils that I do use, but I'm not quite sure if we're going to get into any of that that today. So that's pretty much um, what I'm going to be uh, using. And uh, what we want to do is we want to look at our, our coffee maker here. And I want to uh, imagine a box around this coffee maker and what dimensions is that box uh, that uh, that make up that are that the coffee maker can fit into and if i can get the perspective of that box then that helps me figure out the rest of uh, of the object. So the first thing I need to look at is to say, do where is the eye level or horizon of, of this piece? And um, you can see that this is angle. If I if I look at this angle, this is why I like to use these steps. As you can see, it's angling down just a little bit. So that tells me that my horizon or eye level to my drawing is right here. Now, don't, don't mistake that there's a line here for the counter the, of the kitchen, the kitchen counter here. That is not a horizon, a drawing horizon. A drawing horizon is where your eyes 
um, how the viewer is looking at the coffee maker. If the horizon was higher, um, I would see more of the top. So I imagine where that horizon is, and I'm going to draw this box. So that's where I start, is start to draw a box. And I'm going to draw, we're going to use a two-point perspective drawing. So if I can just get a halfway decent line. And I'm going to say here's the bottom of my coffee maker. And about here is my top of my coffee maker. And then I just imagine this angle here. And I'm going to draw that. And my horizon is a approximately here. I'm keeping that in mind. And then I think of the width of my coffee maker. And we're just going to put it about right here. And as I draw, I might have to adjust those. And then we have the top. I'm going to, I'm drawing this line here. And I look at this rough, oh my gosh, this is so rough. And yeah, the lines aren't perfect. But it's just a start. And there is this should be going up just a tad, or no, down just a tad. I need to erase that. Because remember, my horizon, my horizon is down here. And I'm going to be going over more of this in, um, in the course. If you're totally lost of what I'm, I'm talking about. Okay, so I look at I look at this box and I think, does it have? And I'm not adding the handle 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 yet. I'm just looking at this part of the coffee maker, and I think about the proportion of this to what I drew. Now we're going to cut out the where the, the craft of the, of the maker goes. And I'm using all straight lines uh, right now. And then I'm thinking of this thickness that's right here. And I think of this angle and the back of the coffee maker here and actually this part here is about right there because we have this here and then the back part I'm gonna say it looks like it's angled so I'm gonna put it about right there And you can see that I'm kind of getting um, the, the look of it with just straight lines. Okay. Taking a second look. Step back. This is where um, here I just have a few lines in here. This is where I could... Uh, make adjustments very easily, and I don't have as much 
time invested in, in my drawing. I'm looking here and I'm thinking, oh my, this line here is not very straight. So I'm going to, it looks like this one is, but this one is not. So I'm going to pull it out just a, a little bit here. And you can see that I can just make a little adjustments and then I can erase some of that and see if, if I have pretty much that opening in there. And I think I do. Um, this little top here, because I can see that it's, it's a little domed up here. So I'm just going to rough that in. And then here, there's a lip right here. So I'm just going to indicate that. So this top here sticks out a little bit. And then this angles. So I'm going to put that angle in. And I'm going to get rid of this line here because this is all curved here. So I can start getting rid of my box. This is curved here, and this is curved here. And this is just helping me make sure we have kind of this, there's all these little soft curves that are happening. Okay. That's looking better. And then this angles too here, and then this angles out. This thickness is not right, so I'm going to pull that out. So there's two ways I can do that. I can either put this in, but I think that looks okay. I think I'm going to pull this out a little bit. Again, none of my lines are, are concrete yet. Nothing is. So I pulled that out just a, just a little bit and then angling that. That angle goes to here. I have it going to here right now, so that's not right. It goes to there. And then there's. Uh, where the coffee makers put together. And then there's another soft curve there. I can make straight lines much better if I had my hand resting on my uh, on my paper there, but if I take my hand out and I can make a more confident line doing something like that. Okay, we're just going to leave that mess over there right now and we're going to work on our ellipses. Let me pull this down a little bit. Now, a circle is, uh, this needs to be a square, and it looks pre pretty much like a square to me, so I think I'm all right. And if you look here, the top of the coffee maker, the bottom of the coffee maker is pretty much straight down from there. So. I think I'm good with that. So this is my so I'm just making my ellipse here. And I continue to make it so because that first pass 
is not going to be the exact ellipse. And then I'm just going to erase around that. And this corner is going to disappear. So I need to have an ellipse down at the bottom here. And it looks like it kind of comes out a little bit here. So and this is straight. See how straight that is? So I need to have this curve meet the straight. Let's get rid of all the lines that I don't need. And you see how rough this looks. It's definitely a sketch at this point. My stuff always looks kind of messy at first. Um, I'm going to lighten this up with my kneaded eraser. Lighten that up a little bit and redo this to get that. Where this meets the straight line is kind of tricky. I'm not liking that. So I'm going to I'm going to do an angle here and figure out that angle again. And then This is this is uh, a very soft curve here, too. So I need to look at that whole thing to get that bottom. My eyes are going back and forth. from my drawing to my paper constantly. Oh boy, that doesn't look good. That's three. Ah, uh, it's in here. Let's erase that part. And I'm going to clean this up here. There's a right shape in there somewhere. Okay, I'm going to keep it right there for now. And right in here, it's pretty fuzzy about what's going on in there. So I'm just going to erase this just... Uh, a little bit, but I can still see my ellipse. My coffee craft is going to probably meet right there, and the ellipse is right there. Now, this angles. So I'm going to look at where this hits at the top of my, this opening here. And it's about right there. And then where is this? 
I have another ellipse inside of the ellipse. So we have this space that's right here. And this goes straight. And we have, uh, there's a highlight right at the bottom here, a reflected highlight there. So I want to make sure I have space for all of that. And then I'm going to use my combo to clean these little scratch marks that I'm making to find that that wonderful shape. So I'm looking at this and this. Also, I want to think about the height of that and how much room is left for the, uh, the top. I think I'm okay. Oh, I need another ellipse here. And I need an ellipse at the top. I've got to find out. That angle. And how far, how far down to do the top? And this top has it, it comes up here, but at first I just want to get this ellipse in there. And you can see everything is just so um, so rough at this point. So I want my ellipse. That ellipse to me. I'm thinking of how fat that ellipse is. It's fatter at the bottom, and then as it comes up, the ellipse gets thinner because it's getting closer to the eye level line or the horizon line. Okay, and I'm looking at the the uh, proportion of that, um, I think it looks pretty close. If I was um, doing this, not as a demo, but for, um, for me, for uh, a drawing, I would be taking uh, time to to set this up and look at it from a distance when you step back from your drawing you will see uh, things that you don't see being right over top which I'm right over top right now um, you you guys um, looking at it being able to distance from the drawing, you might see things that I can't see right, right from the beginning here.
we've got all of this like really soft curvy stuff going on over here but I want to get before I get into those details I want to get um, this craft in here let's see do you see that this this is pretty far out about right there so the this ellipse should come out just a little bit everything relates to everything so I'm going to pull that out because that plastic top is wider than the glass and then there's the handle that comes out here. So maybe I should put in that handle. Let's see how far out is that? Does that handle come? Here's the tip of the handle. So it's going to come out about right, right in here comes out pretty far because it has to have the thickness here and the angle here and it comes down you can see I'm using my pencil so I drew the outer part This is at an angle here. Then this part comes to about here. And is this at an angle? If you put your pencil or if you want something thinner like that, you can see that that's at an angle too. So here's an angle here. And then it's cut off right there. And there's an angle at the bottom. Of it. And the plastic part that comes around here. Now I can see the top. Remember our, our horizon line is up here. So I can see the top of that handle. And then it has a little bump out here. And I'm not going to worry about that yet. I wanted to get this handle in so I could see where uh, about this this top here this point of the handle look look how far out it is and look how far in I have it that's not right everything relates to everything so when you're looking at at an a um, line or angle that you want to put in look at what's above it and how far out it's still out a lot further isn't it it's a little gonna affect that line too mm -hmm. and then also let's say this is wrong then it just trickles down to um, to what's wrong
Okay, we're gonna we're gonna say that um, that that's gonna be it for now, and I can come back. Here, I can't leave it alone. See, there's a lot of space in that negative space that's there. So look at that negative space. And this line. Look at this thickness that's here. to get that negative space correct. And yes, it's going to be rounded off. It's not perfect, but I think it all be all right. Okay, let's go back to here. I'm going to clean this up a little bit here. If there's any questions or anything, feel free to ask. So far, no questions. Okay, let's look at what's going on at the bottom of this. We've got we've got a dark here. It's about right there. And then there's another piece that comes down, I think, here. That's what it looks like to me. And, and then there's this uh, there's like a little button on the top here. I'm just going to indicate that. And then there's a dip here. Indicate that. And let's look at the spout. I think I'm going to have to come in just a little bit so that there's room for that spout. The dark comes around and then it overlaps. Here. So that's pretty much that little spout in there. Tina? Yes. Could you remind us what uh, kind of mechanical pencil you're using? Oh, this is just a regular, uh, you can, it, it can be any type of, you know, I've got many different types of mechanical pencils here. Yeah. Whatever uh, feels good in your hand. Um, and you can put different leads in here. So this has an HB um lead in it um and i have this one here i have uh, a 2h lead in it i have a piece of tape on here and it says 2h it's being rubbed off but um and then uh and this is a point this is a point three milliliter that means it's 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 has a very small lead thickness of the lead and this one is a 0.5, so it's bigger than the 0.3. And I have um, 4B lead in this one, so this is a softer lead, but it is a, 
a 0.5 um, diameter of the, of the lead. So I use different, different ones for that, but choosing a mechanical pencil, you just choose one that feels good in your hand. And there is nothing wrong with using a, a regular pencil, um, uh, a, wood, a wood pencil. Uh, I will even pick those up to do certain things. So I have them laying here too. So it's whatever feels good in your hand. Whatever you're used to. What I like about a mechanical pencil is I don't have to keep uh, sharpening it. So if I'm out um, drawing on location somewhere, um, I don't have to bring a pencil sharpener. So that's an advantage uh, to, to having a mechanical pencil. Okay, at this point, I want to look and make sure I'm going to get rid of all these, these lines that I don't need. You want to look and you want to say, okay, do I have the character of what I'm trying to draw here? Are the proportions to how tall, to how wide? Was I able to fit everything in there? Um, does the, the craft is... Uh, since it is something that is inserted in there, does it have the right proportions that I want? Is, is this believable that it's this? Did I uh, capture what I wanted to? Now, when we're, when we're doing our, our drawings, we, we're not cameras. We're, we're not looking to um, to represent, or at least I'm not. Uh, some uh, some artists might be um, that they want to have it look absolutely exact, but that's not my concern. My concern is does the does the does it look like it occupies the, the same space? Is the proportions pretty close to get um, what I want it uh, to, to have? I'm going to go ahead. This cord is just too fun. Um, I'm going to put this cord in. See, it's coming out. I can see the cord actually. I'm going to put in a box. It's a two point. sketch that out just a little bit here. It has an angle to it here. And then the prongs. And then the rest of the cord. And 
and then erase what I don't need. And I've got a little plug here. Okay, let's go up and put some um, some details in here. Um, let's see about this, and then I'm going to go back uh, to this part. You don't want to start. Um, I like to kind of move around because I don't want to get real frustrated in an area. And this is a very fussy area right here. Um, so I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back to that. And I'm going to uh, do something that's kind of fun here is putting this in. And you can see that this is at an angle, right? So I want to put it at the angle that it is and where does it hit too much of an angle and then just curve this around and then curve this and then curve the ends off And then there's another, there's a button here that I can just see the, the, the very edge of that button. So I'll kind of, and then there's a button right here. And if I look at it, it's not quite a circle. Do you see it's an oval? It's a very fat oval. And it's leaning towards the vanishing point over on this side. Can you see that? If you look at it, do you see that there's the there's the center line of that oval there. So I can you get there's two ways you can do this. You can just try to d just get that oval in and that's what I would try at first and if it doesn't look right I would draw the box that that oval goes in but before I do that I'm going to put this other panel in and you see that it's leaning it's leaning forward a little bit because this whole panel's leaning it, that's a actually a three point perspective because it's leaning uh, and then this line here that's pretty much you see that look look here that's pretty much on the horizon. Do you see that that's a straight line? Our eyes telling us that it's that it's not. But that's pretty much where the and then this is going up. That's angling up. And that's pretty much a straight line. There. And then this. This button and this over here. I'm making it too big. Let me get this in all the way first. I'm gonna round the corners off.
um, put the other part of that screen in. And then there's some some buttons and stuff at the bottom. And oh, maybe this should be longer. It should be down here. It should be bigger. Yeah, I didn't have the proportion of that. So let's make that bigger. I should have chopped that before. Um, see, it is pretty much square. And then round off the corners. Let's pull this corner down. It's got to look like it's on that surface. That's at an angle. That will look like it's on that surface, that it's parallel uh, to this line here. And then the button. And remember that button, the axis is going that way. And it's fat, it's almost a circle. <clears throat> okay, so we've got and the top here. And we, I have been drawing for about a little less than 45 minutes. I am not fast. That is for sure. But this is a pretty complicated um, subject. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna tackle um, this that's happening down here, and then I'm gonna clean um, this up. Uh, I'm I'm looking here, and this that that looks pretty uh, pretty believable. I think I'm okay. Um, I think that that looks pretty good. Uh, we're gonna put some details in this so that you can see the difference between um, this plastic piece to that plastic piece. Um, there's also uh, a water level thing that goes on over here that we could stick in um, that can make it even more believable. But we need to go clean up all these all these areas that um, that we don't have right now. I can see this ellipse that's going around here since. Um, since it's it's a it's glass, but here I could not see uh, that continuous ellipse. But I went ahead and drew that continuous ellipse so that we could get the curve, the whole curve. 
So you would never, um, you, you want to continue your ellipses so that you can get that whole nice curve. You, you don't want to just do this. You want to be able to get where that whole ellipse meets on the other side. So that's why I, um, I drew the whole ellipse, even if you couldn't see it. I should have mentioned that um, when I was drawing. But now we're trying to get where this ellipse meets, meets a straight line here, because this is straight here. And we have got this shadow that's underneath and um, the coffee maker kind of goes below um, there. So it has kind of a double um, thing here that we might see. And the outer, this outer part comes in here. And see how narrow this is right in here? So it doesn't follow parallel to that because it curves here. This is, this is pretty complicated um, molding here of the plastic. So I'm going to bring this down and, and just show that this curves, this curves in here. And am I going to have enough room? I might just have to just kind of indicate it. Because there are no hard, hard lines there. Not an easy task. And this, do you see I have a point there? I don't have a point at an ellipse. Get rid of that. And I am going to say that that's good enough for that part. It's not exact, but I think I think it's good enough. I have another ellipse here, so I want this ellipse to go from here to here, and right here, and it's going to be pretty thick. It's See how thick that ellipse is? So from here, and I need to visualize that ellipse in here. And get that curving around. and have it right over top of these other ellipses. So the center marks have to be the same. Okay, so this one, and then this is where this band is. So this, this band comes in. And then this is over top of that. Okay, now I'm done fussing. And so I'm going to put, hopefully do some, I've got my marks. 
where all that is. Now I want to do some clean, uh, clean lines, showing those. Let's see if I can get it. And you'll see me struggle with the ellipses. Okay, good. This ellipse is faded in the back. And then we'll fold this around. And there's a dark. There's a dark that comes across here. And then a light underneath that. And when we go to shade, it will indicate that. Do I have that too much of an angle? Yes, I do. Thin this down a little bit. Okay, so th that's pretty much my outer part of my coffee maker. spend a lot of time on the cord. Okay. Now let's get, oh, it says Mr. Coffee up here. I'm not going to put the actual letters in. I'm just going to indicate some of the, the lettering. I guess I should have started the Mr. Coffee a little over. Let's try that again. And indicate maybe a C here, and then and then two Fs is just going to be two lines, and showing the um, the ups and downs of, of of the lettering, what's tall and what's short. This has a little thing in it, and the rest is dark except for the lettering and that, but I'm not going to be concerned about that. This has a, where we can see the double line because we're seeing the inside of that. And then here, put some dark in here. And just very quickly, I'm going to put some some value in here because we don't our time is almost up. 
Now we want to show that this is shiny here, and the and the way you show that is by um, making um, what's around it dark. Uh, so that's how you would show the sheen. And we have a highlight on the top here. So I'm just going to quickly put in, and it's darker on this side. This is going to be like really rough because we're running out of time. I'm just going to put a erase a highlight there. And this is dark. So as, as I'm taking the time to do this, I can um, go over uh, some things that, that we went over. And the number one thing is I started with a box. And if you can start with a box, you can simplify a complex object such as uh, this coffee maker and to be able to carve out of that box and look at the proportions of your object that simplifies it a lot. You know right away when your proportions are, are way off um, before you start in any detail. And then some darks here. using a kind of a scribble uh, cross hatch um, where I'm not doing just lines I'm going up and down both directions um, scribble uh, cross hatch of really dark in here and again I'm just using my HB pencil at this point I don't have time to do a bunch of layering of, of graphite so right now I'm just trying to get the essence of the values That spout is lighter, so we're going to go around that spout. And again, for me to get this sheen that's over this, I have to get this pretty dark. I have to get things around it um, dark. And we have, since the light's hitting it right here, back here is, is pretty dark.
I'm, this is just a plastic um, protector for my, um, so I don't get graphite all over, smear all over everything. Ina? Yes. We do have a um, comment in the chat that I think this would be a good time to talk about. Sure. Um, so it says, I have a hard time figuring out direction and shape of hatching that reflects the shape of the object. Um, I'm using, I'm, I'm just uh, going across here. There is a uh, way that you can um, use your cross hatching, a contour cross hatching that goes around the, uh, the contour of, of the object. I don't know if that's what they're talking about, um, but um, I do that sometimes. Um, you know, like I'm going, I, I'm going around here. Um, I wanna make sure that I keep uh, this line here. But um, generally, it's not it's not the direction of your uh, of your um, cross hatching. It's usually the values going across. Mm -hmm. So so here I have this has to be darker over here, and it has to be darker here, and then all of a sudden that starts looking rounded. Uh, across there, so I think it's I think it's more of of your value um, than the direction of your cross hatching. But the direction of the cross hatching can um, have help with uh, your uh, showing the form of the piece. Um, as you go, as you layer your your graphite, you're 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 going to get smoother and smoother and smoother, um, and those that's not going to show um, your direction. You know, here I'm just going parallel crossed here, but I want to get a, a value inside here because I want to show that you know there's something right here so and, Tina, yeah so when um when you do contour cross hatching is that more of a stylistic thing yes yes okay so there's different ways that you can um that you can put uh your graphite down you know we all know it, it's stippling and we know parallel lines just doing parallel lines um all of these different ways, a scribble, if you're scribbling, all the different ways is going to, your object is going to have a different surface to it. Um, when, so that is up to you what you want your object to look like. Me doing um, the way I'm doing it now, um, now, uh, it's this is this is the way I would do a sketch. I would not do a finished drawing like this, uh, one that I want to have all the different values and everything. This is just a sketch. This is a quick, um, quick sketch. It is not. It, it's not something that I'm showing um, my perfect form. Um, so I'm leaving lots of room. It's very um, scribbly looking. Um, that's pretty much what we're doing in this course. It's going to be all freehand, um, very sketchy uh, stuff. Not a finished, rendered, beautifully finished, rendered piece. Um, you were saying the direction. Now, with this, I would definitely do direction to show that chrome um, so I am going to go with the direction here. And these but this button is really dark. So 
I'm imagining that uh, direction is important when you're working with textures. Yes, definitely. Definitely the textures. If you want to um, do a texture, you know, this we're, we're going to uh, show that there's uh, that there's a light on here. Sometimes it's hard to talk and and do. So I see that there, and then this is a value. And then it has some stripes going through it because of the chrome. And um, it's also, there's, there's a light that's on the top of that button. It's showing that that button's kind of in. And there's a light on the corner. Let's see if I can get it here. And then it's smaller than that, so I'll go in. And, but there's a light right in here. And we would we would fuss with that and and to to get that. And then this edge is dark through here. So I can I can fuss and fuss and fuss with all this and, and get them all, but this is supposed to be just a sketch. So I am going to just hurry up very, very And then I'm going to make this darker because now this has got to be darker, right? Tina, I have a question for you. Uh huh. So you were just mentioning a couple times how this is just a sketch and you this you would do things differently for a final project. Do you yeah. ever do a sketch like this to kind of work out issues and then do a final project? Of course. That's what my sketchbook is for. Okay. My sketchbook is is definitely for that kind of thing. Do I even want to continue? Um, do I want to pursue this any further? Does it excite me? Um, uh, maybe I'm looking at different compositions um, of a, a certain thing. Uh, doing a sketch like this could be that, oh, I'm just wanting to improve uh, my sketching ability. And if anybody has questions for Tina, please go ahead and put them on the chat, uh, excuse me, on the chat as we're wrapping up. And Tina, we're just about out of time. Yes, I can show you um, the finished. Oh, yeah, great. Of that. But I hope that um, if this would be a more finished uh, piece uh, of that done the exact same way. It's just layering. But you can see that you that's how you get the, the sheet. Mm. Um, showing this looks rounded um, here. It's it, it's all in the values um, of the piece uh, that you're you're doing. Soft curves here. Um, you can see that I I uh, used a box for the plug to the box uh, that this this was in, and then also. Uh, figuring out where do I put my darks uh, to make it more interesting. Um, I have a, a slight shadow going across here and it's lighter um, in the back here. And then I also put uh, the shadow, the slight shadow that's, that's behind. So this is... Um, you know, you spending more time and also layering some pencils, but this is the um, 
looking at um, the construction of, uh, of the piece. And you can see that this is um, a little bit more rough uh, handling in my, in my sketching. Great. I don't know if you want me to uh, talk a little bit about, uh, about the course. Absolutely. Um, why don't I give a rundown of, of what it is? Okay. And then I would like you to tell everybody what they're going to be learning. <laughs> so sure. uh, Tina has a course coming up and it is an intermediate to an advanced course. Um, as you might have noticed in the chat, I did mention that uh, Tina did have an introduction to drawing course, which has the foundation for what you watch today. Um, it's not necessary to watch it, but it could be very helpful. Um, so this course is all about doing objects and still lives. Um, it's five sessions starting January 18th. And then there's also a live feedback session where if you would like, you can send in your work from the course and Tina will, well, give you some feedback on it. Um, so Tina, why don't you tell us more about what we'll be covering? Uh, yes, if you are absolutely brand new uh, to uh, perspective drawing, you, you might wanna look at that first uh, the first one, uh, the course, the first course that she was talking about, because that one um, goes over uh, where the horizon line is and um, about uh, how to draw the boxes that I was talking about. So it might be uh, beneficial uh, to do that. Now, within this course, we're taking it a step further and doing more complicated drawings, um, uh, such as this one. And I can show you um, some of the other, other ones that we will be doing. Um, let's see, my stacked. The first one, the first one is, um, is the stacked books. So this is right in my sketchbook. I failed to tell you that I'm using the Etcher uh, hot press paper sketchbook. And is that the A4 or the A5? So it is the A5. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is, um, this is what I'm using here. It, the paper is really nice to sketch on. It takes a lot of um, abuse with the erasing and things like that. And then you can also add um, uh, watercolor uh, to it uh, too. So um, the paper will allow that. So this is the, the first one we're doing. And then I believe the... Um, and Tina? Yes. Somebody was asking in the chat, is that black gesso? Yes, it is. <laughs> of course it is. Of course <laughs> it is. <laughs> if anybody knows me. And yeah. for those who have it, who are new, Tina uses a lot of black gesso in a lot of her drawings. I'm going to put a link in the chat for her other classes if you want to see how she uses it. It's really quite unique. Thanks. Yeah, so it gives a high contrast. I kind of like it because it's so opaque and and the transparency of, of watercolor, um, it's kind of a good mix. Um, this is one of the other drawings that we're gonna do, and you can see that I added a little bit of uh, watercolor uh, to it. So this one, um, and also ink, um, there's some ink in here, and you can see that um, we're layering our um, our ovals here, getting the direction of the oval. So if you were, uh, you didn't really understand what I meant about that oval's axis going towards the vanishing point, um, we will uh, go over that here. And then this overlay just kind of shows you the box that I started out with. And um, this is another one um, that uh, we're gonna be doing the um, paintbrush. And these are all done in, in freehand in our sketchbook. 
And then uh, here's the brayer that is a little bit more complicated using um, those ovals and, and getting them correct. I am not fast, so you'll be able to draw along with me um, on these. Um, I'm going to show you how to set this up so that this one he has a one point and then a two point and a two point and we'll um, uh, go over that with um, with the horizon line. So um, I hope that um, that kind of gives you an overview of what the class will be on and you are going to see me, the, the videos that we did of these drawings, you're seeing me do them for the first time. Um, it's not something that I have drawn before. The coffee maker, I drew before. And it would have taken me a little bit longer for me to really study the coffee maker to say, oh, yeah, um, you know, this, and the, I would have really looked at the proportions, but since I already knew them, and you can see that here, I still, I think that probably should be a little bit wider here, but um, you have to step back and, and look, and look at what you have, and you're going to see me doing all of that, and it's not something that I've drawn 10 times. A lot of times in these videos, that's what you see. You see uh, an artist that has already have figured everything out and has drawn them many times. And so their teaching isn't showing their thought process. But you're going to be seeing my thought process. And I probably should have been talking all about that. with my camera so I can see, so you can see me. <laughs> there we go. There you are. <laughs> yeah, here I am. Yeah. And if I can throw something in here, um, so there was a question. Oh, that's where all that pixelized, just a second. Okay. <laughs> and let me go back. Nope, that's the same one. Just a second. Here. That's that one. I have so many cameras here. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> so there was a question in the chat. And before I ask it, I'm going to just say that these courses that Tina's doing, all the classes are designed so that you can learn how to draw anything, anything at all. Everything starts from a box, as Tina has said very often. So the question is, do you draw animals? Yes, and I will, I, I oh, even think of that as in a box too. So for example, um, have you ever seen a, a drawing of a dog and the nose doesn't look like it's right where yeah. it should be? Um, I think of putting that nose in a box and then because it's all about how much of the front to top to side that you see and getting that to um, converge to that vanishing point. So yes, Definitely. Um, even thinking of landscapes, I'm not saying that I would put something, um, put a tree in a box. I, would, I wouldn't do that. But I do think about uh, where things are on the picture plane. Um, the trees that are closer to you are lower on the picture plane than trees that are behind. So the tree in the front might be visually small, and the tree in the back is really big, but it's it's not the size that's going to tell you um, what's in front and what's behind. It's where it sits on the picture plane. So yeah, all of that is is perspective drawing. Great. Um, oh, this is interesting questions. Um, 
So two questions. Do you ever use water-soluble graphite pencils or charcoal pencils? Oh, yeah. Charcoal charcoal is so much fun, uh, <laughs> use, especially when you want to get, um, you want to get uh, very loose and free. And there is a style of using charcoal pencils and then watercoloring over those. Hmm. Um, uh, Charles, I think it's Charles uh, Birchfield. I think that's the name of the artist uh, that does that. And his um, paintings have this mood uh, through them that, that are really, really cool. Um, so yeah, charcoal is a good way to uh, get very free with your marks and um, using your full arm and all of that. So yes, I do. Um, uh, graphite, water soluble graphite is, is a lot of fun too. And in a sketchbook, uh, that would be great so they can get some, some value changes. And in something like that, I like having the, uh, the hard line of the graphite and with the value changes that you can get um, with the water soluble portion of the graphite. So that's, yeah, that's a lot of fun. And that would be great in the sketchbook because it'll take water. All right, well, I am not seeing any more questions. So I think we can go ahead and move to our giveaway. Thank you everybody for staying to the end. And so before we do anything, the, um, the giveaway today is a paper block of your choice um, or postcards, and there are two winners. So what I'm gonna do is I have a number that's written on this piece of paper. And before you type anything, there are a few rules here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say go, and I'm gonna type it into the chat and look at the chat for when it says go, because there is a little bit of a delay from my end to YouTube. So when you see it say go, go ahead and type in your number from one to 50. And you can only put in one number. So one number per person. And the person who gets the number, if there are two people who gets the number, they're the winners, or the two people who are the closest to the number are the winners. And I'm gonna give you 15 seconds and I'm gonna type stop in the chat. Anything that comes up after the word stop does not count. Okay, so go ahead and get ready. And go. And stop. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the number. <laughs> yeah, in case y'all are wondering what I'm doing while uh, not answering questions, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta occupy myself somehow. So, <laughs> so the number is 19. So let me scroll back and let's see who the first person who got the closest to 19. Let's see if there's a 19 first. Okay, there is not a 19, but we have a 17 and a 22. So um, I am probably going to mess up the pronunciation, but Calliope Nikitas is number 22. And then we have Canner at number 17. So congratulations. I'm going to put an email address into the chat so you can email us and go ahead and ask for which one you would like. Um, oh, I did pronounce it correctly. Yay. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, email us, let us know um, which product you would like and we'll get that sent out to you. And thank you so much everybody for joining us today. Thanks for staying till the end. And um, I really hope that you join Tina's course. It's gonna be wonderful. And Tina, any final thoughts before we go? Just keep those pencils moving and keep drawing. That's the key. Yes. That's the key. Keep drawing and taking classes. Process Progress is made by practice. Right. So. And you have to practice the, the right things. Mm. You know, not making the same mistakes over and over again. Yes. All right. And Tina, thank you so much. This was really wonderful. Thank you. And everybody, until we see you next time, make more art. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.